Good morning. Good morning. We're glad you're with us this morning. We're so grateful that we can be together this morning. Teeny Horning is right to my left. You're right. And she's going to be sharing with us about uh, crew and the work she's doing. Uh, and certainly, but reflecting on the gospel lesson from Luke 19 and Zacchaeus. And we're going to hear more about that in a bit. Also about Vacation Bible School. We'll hear some things, exciting things about Vacation Bible School this past week. Let's stand as we begin worship. Thank mm-hmm. you.
one Sunday I'll remember. I'm going to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 and 11 through 12. This can be found starting on page 958 of the Pew Bible. To the Church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace be to you from the God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to thank you, thank God for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more, and the love you all have for one another is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your preservation and faith in all persecutions and trials you are enduring. All this is evidence that God's judgment is right, and as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. Verse 11. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you, that our God may make you worthy of his calling, and that by his power he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith. We pray this is so, that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. I am. All right. Um, I am taking the children's sermon spot this morning to share with you a little bit about what went on in this place this past week. It was amazing. Uh, we had vacation Bible school for five nights this year, Monday through Friday. Uh, we welcomed anywhere from 55 to 67 children into our building this past week, and. Um, countless volunteers. Sorry, I'm getting a little emotional this morning. It was quite a week. Um, there are, some of our volunteers are here this morning. If you look around, they are the tired. <laughs> to Jane this morning, she said, I'm really tired. But if you can muster up a little bit of energy here this morning, I would like to recognize everyone who set up 
tore down, served us food, crowd children all around the building, told the story. Is Andy Nixon here this morning? He came Wednesday night and shot off his model rockets for us. It was so cool. So if you helped with VBS in any way this week, if you would please stand so we can recognize you, please. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, so we hope that you all get some rest today and in the coming days because um, it, was, it was a lot, but it was worth every bit of your energy that you put into this this week. Um, every night we had a Bible story, a special Bible verse, and what I feel like was the takeaway of the evening, they call them Bible points. And um, our theme was stellar, shine Jesus light. And so our Bible points every night were just short little things that we learned, the kids learned to say, ending with shine Jesus light. And we, you could hear that echoing through this building countless times every evening. So children, you are going to help out this morning with the Bible points. When I say the Bible point, you are going to enthusiastically say, shine Jesus light. Got it? All right. Night one, when life feels dark, shine Jesus light. Night two, when people don't get along, shine Jesus light. When good things happen, shine Jesus light. Night four, when people are sad, shine Jesus light. And night five, when people need help, Shine, Jesus, light. Thank you. You didn't know it was going to be audience participation this morning. One of the big things at St. Luke Vacation Bible School that has been happening around here for years um, are what we call God sightings. And teaching the children what that means. When something happens in their life, something they experience, something they see, either for themselves or with others, that that's God. That's God working in that situation. Takes a little time for the little ones to kind of get the hang of that. By the end of the week, I think it was starting to register. They got a chance to share, huddle up with their crews every night, share their God sightings. Our adult crew leaders got to huddle every night and share their God sightings. Um, you know, some of those, sometimes we don't think about that. We think things happen and we don't take the time to stop and think that's God. Personally for me, um, my God sightings this week were the number of kids that were in this building. Um, we haven't had a full-blown week-long VBS since 2019. So think about, thank, thank you, COVID. Um, so this was fantastic, fantastic. Another God sighting for me was the number of volunteers who gave up their time to get, get in here every night to help out with these children and teach children about Jesus. I was sharing with Cheryl this morning. I said, I was sitting in the pew one night listening to the Bible story, and this little boy leaned over to me, and he said, is this church? And I think, you know, it was a reality check. We just go through our lives and don't realize the number of children who never enter the doors of a church. And this week, we had many, many children who aren't St. Luke children in here experiencing God and Jesus. Um, we had middle school, high school, and college students volunteering this year, a wonderful group of them. There's some of them sitting right here in the second pew. Um, these were kids, as somebody said one night, these, these kids were VBS when they were growing up, and now they've come back to give back and um, experience VBS again as a, an, older, an older person and sharing that with our kids. Um, we did, took up a collection this week for, to feed hungry children. And um, Jenny Walsh, our director, she thought, well, we'll set a goal of $100 and see what happens. So by night five, we counted this big pot of quarters and nickels and pennies and dimes and some dollar bills. And we collected $241.04. The kids were so excited. It was quite a God sighting. Personally, for me and for my husband, as grandparents, we had four of our grandkids here this week. Two of them come here to church. Two of them live in Johnstown and go to another church. They came one night, and they said, can we come back? 
And so for, they were here for three nights and to see the four of the, our girls bonding with each other, hanging out and experiencing Jesus together was, who doesn't get any better than that as a grandparent, I'll tell you that. So I challenge each of you to be diligent in your God sightings as you go through your day. Um, just stop, take a pause and realize what God is doing in your life. Now, one, we had lots of cool songs um, that we're not going to make you do all of them, but one of them, obviously, you're probably sitting there thinking, I wonder if they sang this little light of mine since the theme was Shine Jesus Light. Yes, we did. A little bit jazzed up uh, version of this little light of mine, and I haven't quite figured out how to sing this with you with this microphone in my hand, but if you would indulge me and please stand, we're going to kind of do our own little version of this little light of mine. The verses are, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. We also, are, our second verse is going to be, everywhere you go, and we're going to march in place. Um, and then our third verse was, when I feel afraid, and you're going to kind of crouch down and hide your head. When I feel afraid, I'm going to let it shine. So please help me out here. I am not a solo singer, so here we go. Uh, and this little light of mine, um, you're going to, Imagine I'm holding out both of my arms. This little light of mine, real simple. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Okay? So you're going to have to do the work for me because I can't. All right? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you. Amen. Good morning. It's great to be, I was thinking when I came into the building, home again. This is my church home, even if some of you have never seen me before. I am a member of this church, St. Luke. Um, I live, when I'm not here, in Freiburg, Germany. And I work with Campus Crusade. It's called Campus für Christus in Germany. And I think a lot of you I know, and some of you I don't know. Look forward to getting to know you. I've been doing ministry in Germany for almost exactly 19 years. Um, yeah, really long. It was supposed to be one year, but one year turned into 19. And um, I started out doing campus ministry, and now I lead a ministry called My Friends, which basically talks about or equips um, Christians to tell about their God sightings. Is that what you said, Sandy? Yes. God sightings with their friends. And I feel like Sandy's message was a great uh, beginning to um, the message today, so I feel like it's it's a God sighting that He kind of put both of these thoughts together. When was the last time 
you pass on a story. What was the story that you passed on last? Think about it. Maybe it was a God sighting because you were in Bible school. Maybe it was just a silly story that you wanted to share with your friend. I know um, some of you know my, my grandma actually passed away right before I came back, and I've been sharing lots of stories about my grandma. She was a very spunky person, um, also very quirky. Um, but I think uh, I've passed on lots of stories about her. Stories have an impact on us. They make us curious. They pique our interest. Sometimes we want to pass them on to others. And so was the case with Zacchaeus. And anybody else besides me, when you hear the word Zacchaeus, you have the Bible school song in your head. He was a wee little man. A wee little man was he? Heidi? Yeah. So you can, I'll give you a second to let that go through your mind. Okay. <laughs> so what do we know about Zacchaeus? He was a small person, that's what it says in the gospel. He was a chief tax collector, which maybe for us doesn't mean a whole lot. But in that, in that day, in that time, the tax collectors were really at the center of everything that was happening. There were a lot of taxes that the Romans put on the people, the Jews and the Israelites and all the people living there. There was especially a poll tax that every person, every male from 14 age, the age of 14 on, and every female from the age of 12 on had to pay. So if you imagine that, really this tax collector had contact with almost everybody in the city. They were not um, the favorite people of the Jews, to say the least, because they were seen as a kind of almost a foreign body or even a traitor or a sinner or a robber because often they were not honest, would often take more money than they needed for the tax and keep it for themselves. They were therefore also wealthy. So we've got this little man who was the chief tax collector he was also a Jew, it says in the gospel. So he believed in God, and he lived in Jericho. Jericho might be a city that kind of rings a bell. It's mentioned, I think, over 50 times in the Bible. And Jericho in the Old Testament, a famous story is Joshua and the walls of Jericho. Joshua walked around the walls of Jericho, and they fell down. So a lot has happened in Jericho. And right before this gospel text, a miracle happens in Jericho. A blind man get, receives his sight. Jesus comes and receives and gives, and he heals the blind man. So can you imagine the ripples that that would make as each person comes to the tax cluster to pay their tax, as they tell about, hey, there was this blind man who received his sight. I wonder what that did to Zacchaeus. I bet he was amazed. Maybe he was skeptical and he thought, oh, that can't be true. Maybe he was curious. Maybe he had a desire to also experience that. And also, Jesus was called the son of David by the blind man. And this name, the son of David, wouldn't have been new to Zacchaeus. He would have known that in the Old Testament, there was a promise in 2 Samuel to David that the Messiah would come from his line. So Zacchaeus is sitting in his tax booth, and he's hearing people talk about this amazing miracle, and he's hearing them say that Jesus was called the son of David, and he's so curious that he decides to climb up a tree. I wonder how much emotion it takes for somebody that's not the favorite person of most of the people around, who's small, who's a tax collector, so he's probably not somebody that's really athletic. And he decides 
that he's going to climb a tree because he has to see Jesus. I don't know about you, but sometimes I can be jealous of that. Well, I'm a small person. I don't think I could really climb a tree. But like to have this excitement, to have this desire so much so that you're ready to make a fool of yourself and climb a tree. It doesn't seem to matter to him at that point if he thinks he can make it up the tree. It doesn't matter to him what other people are thinking. He just wants to see Jesus. The power of a story. What happened to Zacchaeus once he got into that tree? Jesus saw him. He saw him amidst all the masses of people. He called him by name, and he said that he wanted to meet with him. He wanted to eat with him. What a roller coaster of emotions that must have been for Zacchaeus. He went from curiosity, maybe fear. Maybe he thought, uh-oh, what happens when Jesus discovers that I wasn't fair in tax collecting? Maybe amazement because he felt known by Jesus. He felt accepted. Maybe he had awe and reverence. He knew that Jesus was coming to him. Maybe he was wondering how clean his house was. Now, if a story was so powerful to make Zacchaeus climb up a tree, what could a personal experience with Jesus do? Well, how did Zacchaeus react? We see in the gospel that he was so moved by Jesus coming to his house that he said that he would pledge to give half of his possessions to the poor and he would pay back all that he had cheated four times the amount. I wonder how he felt right after he said that. Did he think, oh, jeez, what did I just say? Or was he so excited that he gave eight times the amount? because he saw the miracle of giving. We don't know, unfortunately, we don't know in the Bible if Zacchaeus became one of the followers that then continued on with Jesus. I wish we could read about it. But what does this story have to do with you and me, with us? So on a superficial level, some of us are small, some of us are wealthy, Really, all of us are wealthy, if you think of it in a worldly perspective. Some might feel ostracized by others, and some of you might actually be tax collectors. On a deeper level, some of you, or some of us, might have a longing to meet Jesus and to be accepted by him on a deeper, on a heart level, like Zacchaeus had. Some of you might want to climb up the tree. Some of us might wish We wanted to climb up a tree to see Jesus. For all of us, there's good news. If we have this desire or we wish he had the desire, in Revelation 3.20 it says, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them. So this invitation that Jesus gives to Zacchaeus is true for each one of us. And James says, come near to me, come near to him, and he will come near to us. How great is that? We don't have to climb up a tree. God is a relational God. He's always there. And I often think I don't realize it in my everyday life. I can get tunnel vision. I don't have these God sightings because maybe I expect God to only show up when I read my Bible or when I'm in church. Could it be that we're not experiencing God because we're not open to it? And in the gospel text, it says Jesus was only just passing through Jericho. He maybe, probably didn't even plan to meet Zacchaeus. How often do we, do you, do I for sure? I don't let God interrupt me like Jesus let Zacchaeus and the blind man interrupt him. One way to experience God more is to consciously pray and to ask God, where do I have these God sightings? Maybe you do this already. I love 
the God sightings, but how often do we ask ourselves at the dinner table, hey, what have you experienced with God lately? And not just be aware of it myself, but to sh tell somebody else about it. That's something that in my ministry and our team, we always ask at every meeting, hey, what have you experienced with God lately? This question, this practice strengthens your, our faith and makes us hungry for more. It might even make us want to climb a tree. And it has ripple effects. When, you t when I tell someone else what I experienced with God, then maybe they pass it on or they seek out to experience God. So why is storytelling so important? If you think of Zacchaeus, it piqued his interest. It made him go to Jesus. In Germany, and I think also in the US, um, churches are becoming more and more empty. I don't know maybe uh, what the situation is in St. Luke, um, but there was a study in Germany that was from 2021, so it's almost two years old now, but it was a secular study that was done for other things, also for the church, that said that the church is not able to reach the postmodern society people today. The stories that we hear in church, a lot of people who don't come to VBS or other things, people won't be able to hear. And people want to know that God is relevant in their daily lives. When we share stories, we don't share necessarily about who Jesus is, but how we experiencing him and how he has relevance in our daily lives. I meet regularly with a professional soccer player. Her name's Alina in Freiburg. And she is not yet a Christian, but very interested and asks a lot of questions. And she met with a pastor friend of mine and came back and was really frustrated because he said, Alina, the most important thing is, was the grave empty? And she said, what does that have to do with my everyday life? And it's true. It is important that Jesus died and rose again, for sure. That's the basis of our faith. But it's hard for someone to realize what that has to do with her everyday life. So if I can share stories about what God does in my life, however big or small, it makes people interested to get to know Jesus more. That's what happened with Zacchaeus. And that's what can happen with all of our friends and neighbors who don't know Jesus. It's really easy. So how have you experienced God today, yesterday? What is your God sighting? It could be as simple as my last one that I thought of this morning is yesterday, I was helping my friend move a filing cabinet that was very, very heavy, and we had to carry it downstairs. And I said, it would be so great if there was a dolly inside the door, Jesus. And we opened the door of this school that, never, that she said doesn't have dollies, and there was a dolly right inside the door. That's it. Small story, really easy. And how often do we just say, oh, it was a coincidence. But how different could it be if I shared that story with Alina, and she saw, oh, there's a God that provides. Sharing stories is easy. You can do it all the time. This time you just experience, you share about Jesus. You don't need a theological degree. We don't need any tips, but maybe some of you want to know a little bit more. And if you want to know more about short storytelling and what that has to do with Germany, you can come to the open house or ask me after. But I do have three challenges for all of us to pray that we would let ourselves be interrupted by God, just as Jesus was interrupted, just as Zacchaeus was interrupted or let himself be interrupted. Ask, what have you experienced with God? Ask, what is your God sighting? You do that already, but don't stop there. Tell somebody about it. Maybe your neighbor, maybe someone else in your small group. And there's something in it for you. It's a win-win situation. Philemon, verse six, six, sorry, that's the German. 
coming out. <laughs> Philemon verse 6 says, I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. How good is that? When we, the more we share, the more we understand what we have in Christ. So whether you're in it for you or in it for your friends or family, it will increase your faith. The title of the sermon is Pass It On. And I just came back from Camp Luther. There's a, it's an old worship song maybe many of you know. It says, it only takes a spark to get the fire going. And soon all those around will warm up in its glowing. So a spark sharing of a tiny story about a dolly or whatever else can get a fire going that gets passed on. And then how great would it be if people were climbing up trees to meet Jesus? Amen. Let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. We are invited to sit or to kneel. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. We have failed to be honest and spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Please rise. This is the great news. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. O oh God, you call your church to announce the gospel of reconciliation and truth both near and far. Guide your church as it seeks your wisdom and shares it, trusting your spirit bearing witness among us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You desire peace among nations and peoples. Guard our neighborhoods from hatred. Watch over police officers and firefighters. And teach us to advocate for those who live in fear. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You are gracious and merciful, comforting those who suffer any affliction. We pray that today, especially for Kathy Apple and Marion Apple, for Andy and Amanda Dean, for Gary Demery, Sherry Fannin, Fati Fuchs, Marianne Garrett, Karen Gladhell, Ron Gustali, Rosemary Hatfield, Christy Jones, Jonathan Jones, Carol Kelly, Judy Manning, Todd Reese, Beth Rice, Jan Rice, Barb Roll, Carrie Smith, Vonda Sprunger, and Greg Waddell. Sustain people living with chronic illness. Provide shelter for the unhoused and release any who are unjustly imprisoned. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You send your faithful people to proclaim freedom from bondage and to renew your church. Encourage us by the witness of the faithful departed so that we live in the same hope. We pray for the family and friends of Lud Rudy Leparic as they mourn today. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection 
Open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with a church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray as the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the feast is prepared. Please come and receive this gift of grace. Please be seated.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let's pray. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and conform our lives to his through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, before I share with you the giving moment today, let me apologize for the mix-up with communion. I sorry, apologize about that. So thanks for being flexible. Staying back up and, and creating the, uh, the continuous communion. So this morning in the giving moment, I just want to read to you two verses from Proverbs chapter 11, 24 and 25. And I'll share with you Shakiba's Mohammadi story. Uh, Proverbs 11, 24 and 25 um, is yeah, something we read in morning prayer on Wednesday uh, from the daily lectionary. It says, one person gives freely yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. And it's interesting that these ancient wise words are, con are equating the value, deep value of generosity. It's really generosity for generosity's sake, but there's a benefit uh, that we receive by being generous. So as, we, as I said before, the last few weeks we've I shared with you a couple weeks ago uh, a story of a family in Afghanistan we, we helped through your generosity. Let me t share with you briefly Shakibo Mohammadi's story as well. Uh, she, is, um, li she lives with her sister. There's a, it's a family of eight, one son and five daughters, and her sister and herself. And here's what she says. Uh, I'm doing laundry at houses if available. This is how she supports herself and her family and teach a child at a house. I used to serve as a teacher, but since the ban of education of girls, I lost my job and I'm jobless. The Taliban have imposed ban on women and are not allowed to work or go out alone. I'm doing my best for our survival. If I make money to pay the rent of the house, then we lack money for food. It is impossible to support the family currently. It's not only us, but the people that are suffering from hunger. She asked, they asked, uh, our partners, dude, does your husband support you and your family? She said, my husband was killed by the Taliban. He was a member of the elite forces of the army. Uh, after the collapse of the Republican government, they asked her, has anybody helped you over the last 22 months? She said, this is the first time an NGO is helping us. We haven't received any cash or food items from any entity since the collapse of the Republican government in 2021. What is your message? to the people who sent this aid to your family. And this is the message to us for your generosity. She said, this is a huge act of kindness to support the poor people at such critical time. We've been living a miserable life for 22 months. We are a family of eight with only a three-year-old boy. We don't have any male guardian to support the family and aren't allowed to work. These are the worst days of our lives. We're thankful to our, your NGO for this huge support. We thank you and those who have donated. We pray to God to reward you and those who have donated. Thank you so much. It means a lot to us. So thank you uh, on behalf of Shakiba for your generosity in sharing with um, our work uh, with our partners in Afghanistan, helping uh, folks there. So a couple announcements today. Uh, do we have those pictures? Uh, we, let me just, we're gonna share with you some VBS pictures here in just a minute. Um, but until then, just a reminder, Guys Not Out for Guys is this Wednesday night at um, Pins at Easton. So if you're 
a guy, you want to join us at 6.30, you feel free to do so. We're going to gather together uh, then. Next Sunday at 12.30, we're going to have lunch. Those who are interested in going to India with us uh, next year, uh, come and join us for Indian food up at um, Doc Shin, the restaurant up on Hamilton Road. So that's next Sunday at 12.30. And then we have these pictures from VBS.
This was a pretty dull moment this week. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, come back at 2 o'clock today. Tini's going to share with us more about the work you're doing, and uh, it's really exciting things that God is doing in Germany, and uh, we'll get to hear that at 2 o'clock today in the fellowship hall with our open house. Please stand as we conclude worship with our blessing in him. The God who calls to you across the cosmos, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Go in peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God.